we are going to find derivatives using the chain rule. Now, in previous videos, we found the derivative using the product rule. We found derivatives using the quotient rule. And now, what happens when we have a composite function? When we have a composite function, which is one function inside another composite function, we use the chain rule. So that's when you have a function within a function. Now there's a great Khan Academy video that I, I can't really reproduce, so I'm going to provide that link as well for you to watch, but I'm going to define the ch chain rule for you formally if I have y equals f of g of x, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x, in which you'll notice the du's cancel out and you have dy over dx. Or we can say the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x. And I think, do I have too many parentheses? No, I got the right number of parentheses in there. Which is equal to now this is not times. This right here is not multiplication. This is the derivative of the outside, so the derivative of the outside, so this is the language I'm going to use, the derivative of the outside, and now we're gonna have times, times the derivative of the inside, g prime of x. So that's gonna be the derivative of the inside. So that's what I'm probably going to say a lot, is this language right here, and like I said, this part right here is some really cool stuff. I'm going to refer to the Khan Academy video because it's a great explanation, especially if you're going to further your calculus knowledge by taking an AP course or Calc 2. You definitely want to know what that means and I I could do it I could take the time to do it I'd love to do that but then the video is going to be a little bit longer than I want it to be so let's just start here with y equals our first example y equals the quantity 3x plus 2 quantity squared now this is a function within a function so our function is a quadratic function that we can agree on. It's a quantity squared. So I'm just gonna say it's the same thing as u squared. I'm not gonna use x again because x is already used with the three x plus two. But if I say this function is equivalent to y equals u squared, then what is u equal to? Well, u is equal to three x plus two. So in green where it says refer to the Khan Academy, we're going to find the derivative the derivative of y with, I'm going to use green so that you know that I'm using that right there. The derivative of y with respect to x, so that's the left side, is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u. So here's this part right here, the derivative of y with respect to u. So for this particular problem, the derivative of y with respect to u is equal to to you. And then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. So here's our derivative of u with respect to x. So the derivative of u with respect to x is simply 3. And now the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 2 times 3, which is 6. 
and then u is 3x plus 2. So that's going to equal 18x plus 12. And that is the derivative of y with respect to x. And we must use the chain rule here. And either one of these answers is going to be good. Whether it's factored or it's multiplied out, I like the one on the left. This one is the one that I like but you'll have to check your answers in the back of the book to make sure that they're good. Now, let's use the terminology that I said I'm going to use with the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So if I have y equals 3x plus 2 quantity squared, the derivative of the outside, you're going to take the exponent. You're going to use the simple power rule. So dy dx is going to equal this 2 and then the inside is going to stay exactly the same and then we're going to reduce that exponent by 1 and then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside and the derivative of the inside is going to be 3. So 2 times the quantity 3x plus 2 times 3 is the same thing as 6 times the quantity 3x plus 2, which is what we had over to the left in green. This is really fun stuff. Okay, so let's practice using our u substitution because they're going to ask us to do this in the homework. They're going to say, what would u be? Now, you're not going to have to use the u substitution very um, often. Once you get used to that derivative of the outside, times the derivative of the inside, you'll be doing that shortcut, but u substitution is critical in chapter five. So when we get to chapter five, it's absolutely critical when we're working with integrals, so it doesn't hurt to get used to them now. So here we have y equals u cubed. So that's the bigger function. I have a quantity cubed, so it's a cubic function. And then u is going to equal x squared plus 1. So I'm going to find the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. The derivative of y with respect to u is going to be 3u squared. That's 3u squared times the derivative of u with respect to x. That's going to be 2x, 2x. And then we want everything in terms of x, no u's. So I'm going to have 3 times, actually 3 times 2. Can we do that? Can we take the 3 times 2 and make it a 6? And then I'm going to have an x, so that's 6x, and then u is going to be x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So let me show you in color where the 6x is coming from. 3 times 2x, that's where 6x is coming from. And then u squared, u is x squared plus 1, and then that is quantity squared. And I like it just like that, so no reason to multiply things out. I'm going to keep it like that, and wow, wow, isn't that fantastic? Wow, that's fantastic. Triple explanation point. Wow, that's fantastic. Okay, here's one for you to try. You go ahead and press pause, and when you come back, I'm just going to reveal the answer. So quickly press pause before I start giving you the answer, and then you'll never know whether or not you were able to do this little bit by yourself. Okay, my final answer, dy over dx, is equal to the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside which is equal to 6x squared times the quantity x cubed plus 1. That is dy dx. Please tell me, though, that you practiced with 
finding your y equals u squared and u equals x cubed plus 1 because that's really going to be helpful. Okay, example number 3. So here we are. I'm going to now, now that you're used to the u's, let's just do the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the outside, that's going to be f prime, not f inverse, f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the outside would be the 3 coming down to the front, 3x minus 2x squared raised to the second power, that's our derivative of the outside, times the derivative of just the inside, which is x minus, not x, so sorry, 3 minus 4x. Derivative of 3x is 3. Derivative of negative 2x squared is negative 4x. Hot diggity dog. And we've got a final answer here. I think we're going to have to multiply this 3 times this 3 times the binomial so that we can at least simplify it a little bit. So f prime of x is going to equal 3x minus 2x squared quantity squared times 9 minus 12x. And they would probably put it in descending, not descending order, but in reverse, so I guess ascending order, maybe 9 minus 12x and then 3x minus 2x squared quantity squared. That's probably the answer that would be in the back of a book. I don't like the way I drew that box, so let's try that again. There we go. Yay. Okay, you try the next, and again, I'm going to just come back with the final answer, so make sure that you press pause. Press pause. Don't forget to press pause. Okay, welcome back. F prime of X is equal to... I'm going to go straight to the answer. 8x plus 12 times the quantity x squared plus 3x quantity cubed. That's what we got. That's what we got. That is what we have. Box it. And we are ready to now apply. So now we're going to find the equation of the tangent line to this graph, this cubed root graph when x is equal to 2. So this is what we're having to do. We've got this graph, right? We don't know what it looks like, but we know that when x equals 2, we're going to have a tangent line. So when x equals 2, there's a point on the graph. So there is going to be some y value. We want to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph when x equals 2. So remember, the tangent line to the graph means that we have to find the slope. How do we find the slope? Well, that's our derivative. So we're going to have to find this derivative. So we're going to come off to the side and I'm going to rewrite. So first I'm going to start with a rewrite. Before I start doing my derivative, I'm going to make this cubed root, going to make it an exponent. So I've got x squared plus 4 raised to the second power and all of that is raised to the one third power. Normally I don't go into this depth. This is the same thing as x squared plus 4 raised to the 2 thirds power. That is what y is equal to. So typically I will go straight to this when I rewrite. Now I'm going to find the derivative. So the derivative y prime is equal to 2 thirds times x squared plus 4 raised to the negative 1 third power times the derivative of the inside, which is just 2x. I'm going to put the 2x over 1. I'm even going to put the x squared plus 4 raised to the negative 1 third power over 1 so I can see all my fractions. I've got 4x in the numerator. I've got a 3 in the denominator. I also have x squared plus 4 raised to the 1 third power in the denominator. 
because I want to make that exponent positive. And then I have this x equals 2 over here that I need to plug in so that I can find the slope when x equals 2. So we will have 4 times 2 over 3 times the quantity. I'm going to have 2 squared, so that's going to be a 4. And we lost our favorite bar. There we go. Plus 4 raised to the 1 third power. So in the numerator, I have 8. In the denominator, I have 3 times 8 to the 1 third. And 8 to the 1 third is 2. So 8 over 3 times 2 is 4 thirds. So our slope, let me use that color again, our slope is equal to 4 thirds. At the point on the graph when x equals 2. And the graph that we're talking about is the graph of y equals the cube root of x squared plus 4 quantity squared. So we say, okay, well now I need a point. Well, I've got the point, I've got x equals 2, but what's the y value? Well, the y value, you have to put that 2 into the original graph and find the corresponding y value. So we have the cubed root of 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 squared is 64. The cubed root of 64 is 4, so my corresponding y value is 4. So that's our point. So we have a slope and we have a point, and now we can y minus 4 equals 4 thirds times the quantity x minus 2. This is point slope form. It's definitely an equation of a line. However, in slope intercept form, we'd have y equals 4 thirds x plus 4 thirds. And that you're just going to distribute and combine like terms. So this is slope intercept form. This is point slope form. Make sure that you know how to do both. And this is just, you can pull out your notes probably from an Algebra 1 class, and you can get this answer. And that's the answer that I believe is going to be in the back of the book. I think that the answers in the back of the book for your textbook problems would look like that, because that's what many publishers like to do. So let's have you try now. You find an equation of the tangent line to the graph when x equals 4. What was the first thing that you needed to do? The first thing that you needed to do was rewrite y equals, right? Rewrite y equals with a rational exponent. We needed to find the derivative, right? Find y prime. Then substitute in a 4 for the x. And then we would need to find the ordered pair, 4 comma something, on the original graph, on the original y equals. And then 5, use your point and slope from number three. Your slope came from number three, step three, to write the equation. So hopefully that will help you. If you weren't sure what steps you need to take, take a look at those steps and hopefully they will help you. Okay, if you have not pressed pause, you want to press pause, because here we go. I'm just going to do a little bit of work. dy dx is equal to 2 thirds. x plus 4 raised to the negative 1 third times 1. 
going to put that value in there for x, and I get 2 thirds times 8 raised to the negative 1 third. And that is going to equal your slope, right? dy dx, which is equal to your slope which is 2 thirds times 1 half, which is equal to 1 third. Our point 4 comma, I think it's 4 again, right? 4 plus 4 is 8. The 8 squared is 64. The cube root of 64 is 4. So we've got the point 4, 4. We've got a slope equal to 1 third. So we're going to have y minus 4 equals 1 third times x minus 4, or y equals 1 third x plus, that's negative 4 thirds, add 12 thirds, that's 8 thirds. So y equals 1 third x plus 8 thirds. So if you have that, give yourself a pat on the back. You might want to Definitely keep these steps handy so that you can follow them when you're getting your practice in. Okay, here's a great example. We want to find the derivative, and we have example number five says y equals 3 over x squared plus 1. I'm going to go back to practicing with our u substitution. So y is equal to, y is equal to, 3 over u, and u is equal to x squared plus 1. And we need to find the derivative, so we're going to find the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u, so that's going to be a negative 3 over u squared. We practiced this using whiteboards, so now you hopefully understand the importance of being able to do that quickly. And then we're going to have the derivative of u, which is 2x. I'm going to substitute back in what u is equal to. So I've got negative 6x in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have x squared plus 1 raised to the second power. So that's our derivative with y, of y with respect to x for this problem. Negative 6x over x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Yay. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the try on the right. Again, press pause. Okay. So I have got y is equal to 3 over u squared and u is equal to x plus 1. The derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of y with respect to u, so that's going to be a negative 3 over u cubed. Nope, 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 negative 6 over u cubed. Negative 6 over u cubed, indeed, have to multiply by that too, times the derivative of u, which is just 1. And then we're going to substitute back in what u is equal to. So I've got negative 6 over x plus 1 quantity cubed. And that is our derivative using our chain rule. Once you get the hang of the chain rule, it can actually be quite fun. Okay, here's our next example f of x equals x squared times the quantity 1 minus x squared. And this is where our fun really starts beginning, because we're going to be using our product rule and our chain rule together. So let's rewrite this. We've got f of x equals, we've got our x squared, and then we're multiplying that by 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half power. So we've got a product rule. The derivative of the first times the second. And when we take the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the second times the first, that's the product rule. I stop short. The derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. 
So let's just jump right in. The derivative of f of x is equal to the derivative of the first, that's 2x, times the second factor plus the derivative of the second factor. Now the derivative of the second factor, we're going to have to use our chain rule. So the derivative of the outside is 1 half times 1 minus x squared raised to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. So that's the entire chain rule times the derivative of the first. I'm sorry, times the first factor, not the derivative of the first. The derivative of the first is this 2x times the second factor plus the derivative of the second factor, that's in green or in red, times the first, which is x squared. That's a lot. That right there, though, if you've got that, you've got the calculus part. I mean, we're done with the calculus part. Now, now it's algebra. So this is product and chain rule. So this is product and chain rule together. You can also do the quotient and the chain rule together. But now we have two terms. So we've got the first term and we have the second term. So I'm gonna do a little simplifying first, but then we're gonna to have to factor. So the first term is fine the way it is. There's nothing we can do to simplify that. But the second term, I've got 1 half times negative 2 times x times x squared. So that's going to be a negative x cubed times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. And then this plus or minus in the next step, I'm going to fix that. But what can factor out of the two terms? Well, they both have an x in common, so I'm going to factor out an x. And then they also have 1 minus x squared as a base in common, and the lower of the two exponents is negative 1 half. So we'll factor that out. And when we factor that out, we're going to get 2 times 1 minus x squared raised to the first power. Is it 1 minus x squared? It is 1 minus x squared. It is. It is, it is. 1 minus x squared raised to the first power. And then the first power times the negative one half power, that's gonna, you're gonna add and you're gonna get positive one half, it's beautiful, minus x squared, and then that's it. And then we've got f prime of x is equal to, oh boy, so in the numerator I'm gonna have x times, and then I'm gonna have a negative three x squared plus two. Negative three x squared plus two. Pretty sure, negative 3x squared plus 2, all over 1 minus x squared to the positive 1 half power. So let's just fix that up real quick here, negative 3x cubed plus 2x, all over 1 minus x squared to the 1 half power. I am fairly certain that I did a pretty good job there. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to make sure that I didn't lose anybody on this factoring. So x times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power, right? And then we have to multiply that by something. Well, we factored that out of each term over here. So x 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. So 1 half minus negative 1 half left me with a 1. So there's that 1. And then when I factor out the x here, 
and the 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Negative 1 half minus negative 1 half cancels out, so all we had here was negative x squared. And then I have 2 minus 2x two squared minus x squared is where the negative 3x squared came in. That's over here, negative 3x squared plus 2. I agree with that. And then I had that times the x, and this went to the denominator. So hopefully we're all good there. Negative 3x cubed plus 2x all over 1 minus x squared to the 1 half power equals f prime of x. But I think that this is fairly good, a fairly good example of what I'm talking about. The calculus was in this very first step. So you may get the calculus part correct, but then when you have to do all the algebra, that's when we start getting into troubled waters. Okay, I believe we have, do we have a try? Do we have a try? No, nope. yep. Yeah, we do, we have a try. Let's do a try. Let's not do a try. Let's do a try. We don't have a try. Negative three X squared. We do not have a try. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this video off here. Here's a try. We're gonna cut the video off here though so that we can do all these four tries in the next video and then just continue to practice some more problems. Oh, let's keep going. Okay, here's four tries. Here are four tries for you. Go ahead and press pause. Then the video is not going to be as long. Press pause and I'll come back with my answers. Okay? Okay, for those of you that said, you know what, I just needed a quick reminder. I'm learning so many things here. S of t, I'm going to rewrite this. t squared plus 3t minus 1 raised to the negative 1 power. And then we're going to use our chain rule. So now we've got the first derivative. We're going to multiply negative 1 times t squared plus 3t minus 1. Subtract 1, which gives us negative 2. And our derivative oh, times the derivative of the inside, 2t plus 3. So our final answer is the opposite of 2t plus 3 over t squared plus 3t minus 1 squared. Okay, this next one, we can rewrite this one as well. So we're going to rewrite this one. You could also do the quotient rule, but because you don't have any, um, it's not necessary to do the quotient rule, to be honest with you. We could just go straight to our product rule. So I'm going to rewrite 3 times the quantity x cubed minus 4 to the negative 2 power. And we don't even have to use the product rule because our first term isn't even a variable. So we can just simply do the derivative of the outside, which would be a negative 6. So f prime of x is going to equal negative 6 times x cubed minus 4 raised to the negative 3 power times the derivative of the inside, which would be 3x squared. And then we just simplify that by saying we've got negative 18x squared in the numerator all over x cubed minus 4 raised to the third power. So hopefully you're two for two. If you're not two for two and you actually watch that, try the next ones. See if you can kind of get in to the rhythm of what it is that you're supposed to do. You know, rewriting, using rational exponents. Press pause and give it, give it a try. So you've got x plus two raised to the negative one half power when we rewrite this. And then our derivative is equal to negative one half subtract 1 and we get negative 3 halves and then times the derivative of the inside which is 1 so I'm going to have a negative 1 in the numerator and in the denominator I'm going to have 2 times x plus 2 to the 3 halves power now in the back of the book they may write this in radical form negative 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus 2 cubed 
So they may do that. Because that radical now needs to be broken down, I think that they're going to leave it as a rational exponent, but you never know. Okay, try the next one. I'm going to read, and this should be equals y. So I'm going to rewrite this y equals 3 times x cubed minus 1 to the negative 1 third power. The derivative of y is going to be negative 1 third times 3 times x cubed minus 1 to the negative 4 thirds power times the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared. We're going to simplify, and I'm going to cancel those out, and I get a negative 3x squared in the numerator, and in the denominator, we get x cubed minus 1 raised to the positive 4 thirds power, and that is your derivative y prime. And I'm checking all my answers, and I, I believe I got them. I believe that I got those four tries correct. So... Let's do just a few more problems and make sure you've really got it. Again, you can try these as tries. I'm going to work through them and show you all the work. So we've got f of x equals x cubed times x minus 4 quantity squared. This is going to take our product rule because we now have a variable times another factor that's a variable. So we have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, which is going to include the chain rule. So that's why I'm putting that one there so that you can see in my work that I did that. I did the derivative of x minus 4. So the derivative of that is 1 times the first, which is 3, which is x cubed. And now I'm going to simplify, and I get f prime of x is equal to, let's see, both of these have x's, so we'll factor out an x squared. We'll also factor out an x minus 4 raised to the first power. That's going to leave us 3 plus... 2x, nope, 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 let's get this straight, 3 times x minus 4 plus 2x. Now I have to kind of redistribute and make sure that this works. So when I multiply this back through, I'm going to get 3x squared, hot diggity dog, x minus 4 to the second power, yay, and then I'm going to have x squared times 2x is 2x cubed, and that's what I would have had there, and then x minus 4. Terrific. That's it. Now, your factoring, you might have to do a little more, maybe even a little less. Who knows? I've got 3x plus 2x is 5x minus 12, and because it's so easy to multiply the binomials, it would not surprise me if you did that. I'm going to just box this the way it is right here. Okay, let's resize. Give myself a little bit of room for the next example. And let's try again. Okay, we've got y equals t times the quantity or times the square root of t plus 1. So again, I'm going to have this product rule because both of these factors include variables. So we'll have y prime or dy dt. Let's do dy dt. dy dt is going to equal the derivative of the first, which would be 1, times the second, plus the derivative of the second. Now the derivative of the second is going to be 1 half t plus 1 raised to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is 1, times that first factor of t. So this is all the derivative of the second factor. So make sure you've got that. dy dt is equal to 
t plus 1 to the 1 half power plus 1 half t times t plus 1 to the negative 1 half power. We can factor out a t plus 1 to the negative 1 half power, and that's going to leave us t plus 1 plus 1 half t. So in our denominator, we're going to have t plus 1 to the 1 half power. And in our numerator, we're going to have t plus 1 half t is 3 halves t plus 1. I'm going to multiply each term by 2, and I get 3t plus 2 over 2 times t plus 1 to the 1 half power. And that is our final answer. And that's because we can't have a complex fraction. Can't have a fraction within a fraction. If you give yourself the time to go through these problems thoroughly and really understand the algebra, it's only going to take a couple of problems until you start to gain those necessary skills that you may be weak on. So trust me. But you have to devote that time to getting it done. Okay, y equals the square root of x times x minus 2 squared. I'm going to rewrite this. y equals x to the 1 half times x minus 2 squared. And then we'll do the derivative. The derivative of the first is 1 half x to the negative 1 half times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. It looks like we have a 1 half that we can factor out. So I'm going to factor out that fraction. I'm also going to factor out an x to the negative 1 half. And I'm going to factor out x minus 2 to the first power. And then what's that going to leave me? An x minus 2 plus 4x. So this gives us 5x minus 2. The 5x minus 2 can stay in the numerator. The x minus 2 can stay in the numerator. The x to the negative 1 half needs to go to the denominator with the 2. So let me move this equal sign because we're going to be able to do this in one swift move. Remember the 5x minus 2 can stay in the numerator. The x minus 2 can stay in the numerator. But in the denominator, the 2 and the x now to the positive one half. So it would not surprise me if they had they, as in the publishers, put maybe two times the square root of x in the denominator and call that y prime. That was a good one. And let's move this over here. Maybe resize it to make some room for it. That would be our final answer right there. Okay, let's try this last one. Let's see if you really get it, because this last one is our quotient rule and our chain rule. So if you can try this one and you can get the derivative part, you're golden. Okay, while you're taking a look at that, hopefully you've pressed pause. But if you have not pressed pause yet, press pause so that you can try it yourself. Okay, y prime is going to equal the derivative of the outside. times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is the quotient rule. So we're going to have this quotient rule here. The quotient rule, and we're doing the quotient rule of the inside. 
So the quotient rule says the derivative of the numerator, which is 8x, times the denominator, minus the derivative of the denominator, which is negative 1, times the numerator, which is 4x squared, all over the denominator squared. So we've got 3 times 4x squared over 3 minus x raised to the second power times, I've got 24x minus 8x squared plus 4x squared all over 3 minus x quantity squared. We're going to simplify that fraction. I still have 3 times 4x squared over 3 minus x raised to the second power times negative 4x squared plus 24x all over 3 minus x quantity squared. I'm going to square that fraction, that first one. That's going to give me 16x to the fourth over 3 minus x quantity squared times negative 4x squared plus 24x times 3 minus x squared. And I get 3 minus x to the fourth power in the denominator. And then what can we factor out of the numerator? Rather than multiplying 3 times 16 and getting 48, let's factor out. So I can factor out a negative 4. I can also factor out an x. So when I factor out that negative 4, I'm going to have 48 times negative 4, which is negative 192. And let's factor out a positive 4 so that we don't have that negative on the outside. Let's factor out a positive 4. So we're going to have a positive 192. And then that's going to be x to the fifth power times the quantity. And I'm going to reverse these. When I factor out a 4 from the 24x, when I factor out a 4x from the 24x, I'm going to get a 6. And then when I factor out a 4x from the negative 4x squared, I'm going to get minus x. If we factor out the negative, we'll have negative 192 times x minus 6 over 3 minus x to the fourth power. But it's really not necessary to factor the negative out and make it messy with that negative. We can keep it exactly like this and then tuck that negative inside, especially since the denominator has that negative tucked in with a three minus x. And that is the chain rule.